Sol Yanka, a thick and spicy soup. And Grilletta, socialism's answer to the hamburger. Some of these favorites of East German cuisine survived the fall of the Berlin Wall. But what did East Germany really taste like? The Jäger schnitzel was a real classic, and also a source of some confusion. Germans from the West might have expected an escalope chaussure with mushrooms. In fact, it was something else. For East German cuisine, you had to have a bit of imagination. For the Jägerschnitzel, for instance, normally it would have been made from a veal cutlet. In the East, we had pork, and even that wasn't available very often. So some housewives just used sausage instead. Aurek Günther's Berlin restaurant specializes in dishes that were favorites in East Germany. His version of the Jägerschnitzel is slices of chausseur sausage coated with flour, egg and breadcrumbs, then fried golden brown in clarified butter. He follows the original recipe for the sauce, too. I fry the onions in butter and then add peeled tomatoes and ketchup. I personally always add a dash of pickle juice. Then he purees the sauce. That's real tomato sauce, my dear Westerner. And this is a real East German Jägerschnitzel. The restaurant was named after the East German parliament, the Volkskammer. Decades after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the food tastes just like it did during the socialist era. And the decor is authentic, too. There's also ragout fin with Wooster sauce, a light meat au gratin with cheese. And the Sweden Cup, a popular dessert of vanilla ice cream, applesauce, egg liqueur and whipped cream. It takes you back in time to East Germany. It's still nice, though. I remember that it used to look like this. Even the chairs are just as uncomfortable. But for that, the food is tops. The gold broiler, like I had today, was a favorite when we were young. Often, we'd go out at night to the broiler bar and pick up a grilled chicken. Actually, I'm from the West, just here for a change. Back then, we didn't make it over to the East much. It was hard to get hold of basic foods in East Germany. Not everything was available all the time. People often had to wait in long lines, especially when imported goods such as bananas and oranges came in. Regional and seasonal ingredients dominated. East German cuisine was simple and filling. We made a lot of preserves. We did a lot ourselves to prepare for the bad times. Other socialist countries also influenced the cuisine. Lecho is a thick Hungarian stew with peppers. And Solyanka is a thick and spicy Russian soup with sausage and meat scraps. In a typical East German restaurant, patrons were shown to their seats. But that had more to do with a shortage of tables than with friendly service. In the 1970s, fast food became a trend in both East and West Germany. East Germany put out its own versions of West German offerings, but changed their names. Grilled chicken, for example, was a broiler. East German hot dogs were called Ketwurst, ketchup on Wurst. And the socialist answer to the hamburger was the grilletta. It used to be a roll with a meat patty in it. Now I can compare the two. The barbecue sauce made the difference. That's what a grilletta was. Auric Günther still has a soft spot for East Germany, even if he did plan to leave the country. I had submitted an application to leave. I couldn't deal with a few things here. So after several years, I made the decision. I wanted to be free and not be forced into thinking certain things. But apart from that, there were good times too. But so was a really nice time. 
In the end, he didn't have to go. The Berlin Wall fell and East Germany as an autonomous country ceased to exist. But East Germany's cuisine lives on. Some dishes are even growing in popularity on both sides of the former border and with foreign tourists.